During the summer, I carried the banner with other members of our collective in protests against the bombardment of Gaza, which I believe will be seen by history as a war crime. 2,000 people were killed in that bombardment, including 500 children. And thousands more have been so traumatised by physical and mental wounds that it's difficult to see how they will be able to survive the relentless bombardment they had to go through every night. Now, when we carried this banner through the streets of Brighton in protest against that bombardment, we were absolutely astonished and very moved by the effect that the horse and the fighter and the banner itself as a whole had on the people that we were passing by. We carried it along sideways to the traffic, so passengers in buses were looking down at it. And we could see that they were really very moved by what they were seeing. I think it has a, a, a kind of numinous power which speaks to people. And they, the, the way it speaks to them is to show them that this behaviour is so wrong. I'm a volunteer visitor with Gatwick Detainees Welfare Group. I've been visiting detainees at two detentions based at Gatwick Airport. Um, this is the 20th anniversary, and this year a group of volunteers and the, the workers um, have organised the Refugee Tales, which has been an amazing walk from Dover to here we are today at Crawley, over 90 miles along the North Downs in some of the footpaths of the pilgrims who, who, who are written about by Chaucer in the Canterbury Tales. I was also involved in, with the group of women and, and um, many other people in public sewings of the making of Picasso's Guernica. It's here today at the Horth and there is a connection because most of the detainees have fled from from war, from famine, from discrimination um, against their religion, their sexual orientation, and many other reasons. And Picasso um, painted Guernica in protest of the bombing of the town of Guernica in northern Spain and during the Spanish Civil War. So there, there is a very deep connection, and I'm really pleased that we have our banner here tonight because it connects with the refugees. Maud and I had also been talking a lot about drone attacks and contemporary techniques of uh, attacking civilian populations and obviously in the 21st century we're seeing this kind of increase in use of drones and so when we were collecting these newspaper articles for our original idea for the horse we were also looking out for drone attacks and how that was being narrated within the press. We ended up turning the newspaper prints into stick figures. And that's why we've got these stick figures across the body of the horse. And then when we came to the public sewings, a number of people were moved to embroider the individual stick figures. And so that's why we have these sort of sections where the stick figures have been embroidered over. So we were very, very conscious of the fact that each little figure represents unnamed thousands of people who have been killed by aerial bombardment but whose names we don't know. There are people all over the world at the moment trying to create methodologies to document the names of all the people in Yemen, Somalia, Pakistan, Afghanistan and Palestine who have been killed by this dreadful method. Well, I was very much involved in making the woman with the, the child, with the dead child. Um, it obviously appealed to me, I'm, I'm a mum. But also, I, I felt very much that she has a, 
a very powerful image to portray. And in thinking in terms of wanting to update the images, I wanted the baby to be of mixed race because now um, there are many people of mixed race and since Diana is about racism, uh, I felt it was important to have that image um, brought out. Um, and I wanted to use colour because I felt colour was... Um, the, the purple and green uh, are very much the suffragist colours. Um, and I, want, I wanted very much to incorporate those to give life to it of a different type. And I started by sketching out Picasso's horse's head. And it was the, the head that really had kind of caught my attention to begin with. And the pain and the suffering and this, this tongue and the teeth, the tension around the horse's mouth, it really resonated with me. I really saw that the horror of the moment because obviously Picasso created Guernica in response to the bombing of Guernica. And it was market day when that bombing was going on. And there were a lot of animals as well as humans who were killed in that bombing raid. The horse is um, also a very mixed media piece, so we have the use of felt in certain areas, which were glued in there and also stitched. We've got the use of fabric paint and fabric pen. And then Lily, I think it was Lily who had, when we were at her home working on the horse, she pulled out a number of bits of um, brocade and interesting materials that you can see here that we laid on to try and give a sense of the, the mane and the tail. And there was also the intention to write people's names through the positioning of the brocade into the tail. So there was that idea muted as well. I chose to work on the bull and I was very clear about that because um, my political relationship was with bright and anti-fascists many of whom actually are um, also an, an animal rights activists and many of whom are men. So the bull somehow seemed sort of appropriate. Although actually in terms of Picasso's scheme, the bull represents Spain and it could be seen as a kind of um, a, a symbol of, of, uh, of a Spain against which fascists were fighting. So there was a sort of reversal that went on when I chose the bull. And that reversal also went on in my making of the bull. So I tried numerous times to get the ball right because I was sort of interested in um, how the shapes could have contemporary political relevance I tried initially to work on t-shirt material so t-shirts that in their history actually are an American um, army uniform so the t-shape but they have been adopted by activists to use as slogans, and so they've been carved out as a kind of political space. So I think, fantastic, I could choose T-shirt material, or I could get the shape of the ball made onto T-shirt, but it didn't work, and I think the reason it didn't work is there was a disruption to the integrity of Picasso's shape. And one of the reasons why I think uh, we work together well between our individual political stances and political groups, and we're able to work to together collectively on a making process is we kept Picasso's forms quite close to our hearts, I suppose, but also close to our working practices. So then I ended up making the bull in actually quite um, uh, interesting material. I wanted something that could hold the B shape, so it's quite stiff, and the material is actually used for women's corsets. So a very masculine bull has actually got a very feminine fabric, but it, it's a very, very tough fabric because it's to reshape and to hold you in. And that fabric was almost impossible to stitch on the outside. So I had some job doing this embroidery. I chose a whiplash sti stitch, actually, so and a, and a graphite grey, a lot of... Uh, and, and trying to echo Picasso's grey. But in fact, the, to stitch on the outside was very, very difficult. And I'm, I didn't want to lose the, um, the uh, artistic and political decision to use T-shirts. So there's a tiny fabric of a clenched fist, you may be able to make it out, but cut into the shape of an ear um, to represent the kind of contemporary politics of solidarity and collective anti-fascist work that's stitched 
onto the bull to give an echo of that. The decision to use the kefir for the fighter was Trini's, and Trini brought the kefir that she had received from a Palestinian fighter. Trini is a long-standing campaigner for the Palestinian Solidarity Campaign and for the rights of the Palestinian people to self-determination. So it, it was brilliant that she came up with that idea.